back to Core Climbs. Today we are in the Red River Gorge climbing at the Chaos Wall in Miller Fork. There's a couple of routes we're looking to get on here today. Most excitingly, in my opinion, is Lithuanian Princess, which is a 10A with a really campusy start. And I'm just looking forward to seeing how I do at it compared to last time. It's hot, it's humid, it was raining earlier in the day, but I'm just happy to be back at the red. We've got the crew, we've got Anna, we've got Garrett, Kat, Jed, myself, and the newest addition is Columbus climber, Tyler. So yeah, first trip back to the red after the move to Pittsburgh. So it feels familiar. And right now that feels really good. <laughs> Lithuanian Princess starts on a big stack of rocks and has a three-move campus start before you can get either a heel hook or a toe up to help stand up into a jug and actually establish on the route. It's an overhung route that's fairly juggy. I think the crux is in between the fourth and fifth clip. I honestly love this route so much. Okay, so we were like, oh, this route looks horrible. It's a slabby route that's wet, but it's a bale beaner. Oh, but we can stick with it. It's dripping water. Let's go. We can get it. If you want to use my stick clip, you could probably reach the anchor. I want to use both stick clips. Cat climbed the very wet, slabby climb to retrieve the booty. Are you happy? Yes. Rescue mission complete. Up next was a route called Die with a Blessing. A 10D that started on top of a boulder on the far left side of the crag. So the 10D, I led it and honestly it was really fun, but a lot of the moves were like just this much out of my reach. Uh, so it was a little bit of a scary lead for a shorter climber, but Anna did it afterwards and she really liked it as well. There's a critical undercling that feels really cool, but it also like locked my pinky up a little bit. It was like this <laughs> for like a solid 20 seconds. I was like, um, but I think it's feeling okay now. I guess we'll see. Anna Spoon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is what a face of a litterer looks like. <laughs> if you see this girl, do not approach her. <laughs> the crew packed up and made the trek over to the secret garden to climb a route Garrett recommended called Hippie Lip Balm. We also climbed a 510A called the Net. The Net was classically Red River Gorge in the fact that the bottom was the hardest part. 
So Anna and I did a bit of a right side variation to get up and past the first bolt of it. That interests me so I'll just stay on earth and choose to live my life below. And I don't care what you think or what you say. I think I can make my own choices anyway. But I don't care what you think or what you say. I don't want to be the moon, no. Throughout the day, there were a lot of gear discussion centered around our clipstick head, known as the squid, and Tyler's belay device called the lifeguard. I'd love to hear people's thoughts on both of these devices in the comments if you have experience with them. plan is to go to Brono Wall and I'm excited because we haven't been to this wall before but there's two 510As there and so that will continue the project of Jed and I trying to climb all the 510As in the Red River Gorge. Also it rained like a ton last night and everyone slept really poorly because it was really hot and humid except for me. I slept like a rock. Everyone else did not have a good amount of sleep last night so we'll see how today goes. On a scale of 5'7 to 5'15, what was your sleep last night? 5'11. Okay. 5'12R. 5'12R. Dude, the harder feet. stuff is worse. <laughs> but a trad 10 feet. Jed, how was your sleep? You have to fall asleep for it to be asleep. <laughs> Brono Wall is a really beautiful crag. We started with a short, overhung, juggy 10A called Spider's Hangout. This climb doesn't get a lot of stars on Mountain Project, which confuses me because I really liked this route. The last few moves before the anchors are the crux of the route, but if you know the beta, it's not so bad. After Spider's Hangout, we climbed a slabby 10 that looked like a perfect waterfall path. The bottom of this route was harder than the top, and to be honest, it wasn't my favorite. I just got off a 10A and it was really slabby. I definitely think that I need to downsize my shoes like a half size because I was slipping. Jed and I started telling riddles for some reason and it was super funny because of how confused and mad the people who were trying to figure out the riddles got. There's examples of a few of the riddles in the description if you'd like to try your hand at them. So I just took a really, really big whip, but more importantly, Anna's tuna salad today, chicken salad has a spoon with it so that's the content we love to see this is what this is what you wanted to get is that your big ass whip that you took then i tried to throw a quick draw up to jet on a route and it went completely behind me and failed garrett tried his hand at an 11b called nanotechnology a very tall slabby route that ended with some spicy chimney climbing before we moved over to check out Shady Grove. Oh, I cannot even describe to you the magnitude of this crag right now. This is insane. Like, this is probably one of the most impressive crags aesthetic wise that I've seen at the red so far. Like, just look at that. That is insane. Oh my gosh. Imagine just being back here and stumbling across this, like, untouched. God, that, got, that had to be really cool. On the far right side of Shady Grove is a 10A called Street Fight. Once again, the bottom of this route is the most difficult part. But on this route, once you get past the third bolt, the climbing was so easy that I could climb while also filming with my other hand. It was great to get back to the red again. Stay tuned in because next week I'm taking you all with me on a work trip 
where I adventured to an out-of-state bouldering gym, as well as did some questionable urban climbing in a really cool old industrial park. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay hyped.